Good afternoon to you, Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com. Here it is Friday now, the 21st day of June 2024. On the update today, what is up with the Pawn Stars meme? Lots of people out there trying to figure out what is this deal off the coast of Florida, 92L, almost a tropical depression, but not quite. And with the internet the way it is, everybody can look at all the observations and everybody's got their opinion on things. Lots of back and forth with it. So I'm here to kind of explain it, show you what the thought process is, and to remind you, these are just labels. The impacts are the same. And in fact, if uh, what I have read is correct, we've already had, unfortunately, a couple of fatalities in Florida due to rip currents. And if this system was not there, those rip currents probably would not have happened. And those are impacts, all right? But anyway, yes, we do have to talk about the naming of systems, what the criteria are, and then really understand again, it's all about what's going to happen to me. Forget what it's called. Ask yourself, all right, what's going to happen to me? What's going to be going on at my location? All right, so we'll take a look at that and more. First time I've ever had a meme as part of my thumbnail, so there you go. First of all, the big picture. There's 92L with all of its hemming and hawing from the internet. And yeah, most people don't care, but the weather nerds out there were all like, what is that? It's gotta be a depression. We'll get to it. Our gyre, I mean, seriously, you can just clearly see the gyre down there, gyrating, doing its thing. And we might get a new tropical system out of this, headed towards generally the same area that Alberto did just recently here. And in fact, speaking of Alberto, there's the remnants of that system. Plenty of moisture now streaming into northern Mexico, parts of West Texas, and even into New Mexico. And uh, they've had some showers and thunderstorms out there. I showed you that yesterday. The last couple of days have uh, been pretty wet out there. In fact, there's some flood washes in effect for parts of the Four Corners region as that tropical moisture does come in impacts 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 people these systems are much bigger than we are and they do have impacts reaching far more than if they are a hurricane and that's all i'm worried about if it's not a hurricane who cares we got to get away from that anyway a couple of things i wanted to point out here the internet lit up with all kinds of people chiming in on what's going on i'll show you a couple of posts here over on the twitter weather tiger the 92l uh, east of jacksonville remains the proverbial pain in the liver that falls just short of jaundice today. That's great writing, isn't it? It's very comical. Clear circulation and 35 plus mile per hour winds, but, and this is very important for those of you playing at home, convection not quite organized enough for the NHC to call it a depression. Showers and whatnot will continue into Georgia, Northern Florida through this evening, right? And uh, back perch weather, don't know who this is, but I like the tweet. Invest 92L sure knows how to leave us on the edge of our seats. Her time is running thin as uh, and Floridian land is fast approaching. Can she pull off an Imelda 2019 style plot twist? Again, the writing, the prose here, P-R-O-S-E, right? Like writing, pretty good today up on the Twitter there. Uh, Imelda. 2019, I was there for that over in Texas. It looked like a nonchalant disturbance. It had a very low probability of development. As it approached the Texas coast, it became Tropical Storm Imelda, dumped a lot of rainfall, and uh, that was just a couple of years, of course, after the devastating impacts from Harvey. But Imelda did drop a, a tremendous amount of rainfall in some parts of Texas. I remember that very well from 2019. So what's up with this system? What's the deal with it? Well. Let's go over here to the National Hurricane Center and let's read the latest outlook. All right, I think that's very helpful. Satellite imagery and National Weather Service Doppler radar data indicate that showers and thunderstorms associated with, and there it is, again, people can see all this stuff, a well-defined low pressure area centered about 80 miles east-southeast of Brunswick, Georgia, continue to lack the necessary organization for the low to be considered a tropical cyclone. Recent Air Force Reserve reconnaissance, reconnaissance aircraft data indicate that winds to 35 miles per hour are occurring in association with the low. Only a small increase in the organization of the showers and thunderstorms 
could result in the formation of a short-lived tropical depression, there you go, uh, before it reaches the coast of northeastern Florida or Georgia, and interest there should monitor its progress, but it doesn't matter, it's just a name, and you look, I'll say this, for everybody that screams and hollers about how the National Hurricane Center names things to fit some kind of an agenda, this should fit very nicely with the antithesis of that line of thinking. And I also realize there are systems that we can remember that look as good as healthy in terms of weather, uh, structurally, this system that were depressions or storms. A lot of those were former stronger systems and they were on their way down. Bottom line is at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it's a you know, tropical low sitting out there over warm water. It's generating some convection. It's got a wind field with it that has helped to generate those rip currents. And again, if the uh, news sources that I was reading, if all of that is correct, we've lost a couple of people today in Florida due to that. And that is what matters more than what in the heck we name it. But I just thought I'd point all this stuff out because, you know, people do follow. They, they want to know what's up, what kind of standards there are and so forth and uh, this helps to explain it all right and meanwhile let's go back to the home page here of the hurricane center we got this other feature down here this will eventually be 93 l and they mentioned the hurricane center does that a broad area of low pressure is forecast to form over the bay of campeche by this evening environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development and of course they're looking at a, at a potential tropical depression to form as that system moves towards the northwest with time and again a big rainmaker down here for Mexico and that'll be even more moisture that gets pulled in this direction once it gets closer to mainland Mexico down there so lots of stuff to watch um, a little bit more on 92L this is important stuff here and I like the scientific analysis this is from Michael Lowry and you know he's one of the best in the business of course Michael was talking about this five or six hours ago now. And yeah, recon was out there. And the first pass from the recon plane, or the hurricane hunters, as he says, shows a noticeable wind shift at about 500 feet with 92L. Winds are quite, uh, still quite weak, but it looks to be close to tropical depression. We'll see what the additional flight data show. And we'll get an update any minute from the Hurricane Center. Again, that was earlier today. And then the 8 a.m. came out. And they talked about some of the same stuff I just read to you. And then they did another update around 1035 Eastern Time. And again, you know, it might still be a short-lived depression. The same exact thing that we just talked about. Reiterating it here. We're watching it, but the impacts are all the same. All right. Here's what it looks like on the close-up satellite loop from Tropical Tidbits. Any wonder where the low-level center is? Yes, it's right there and the deeper thunderstorms, what little there are, being blown to the south. You've got these little arc clouds coming out here. That's collapsing thunderstorms. That is not air. And you know, you got to understand this. That shows me that the air is going away from the system. And tropical cyclones, you need that air coming together or converging towards that low pressure area, which again, right there is the center of circulation on the last frame. And when you see that collapsing thunderstorm, those outflow boundaries and those arc clouds coming out, racing away from those collapsing thunderstorms, that's a sign of dry air and a system that is struggling. But look how big it is overall, right? That's a large weather feature. It's bringing those onshore winds through the area. And I'm right up here in Wilmington, by the way. We had a good little shower that came through uh, when I was out and about earlier today and got the streets nice and wet, filled up a few of the gutters and whatnot along the side roads, you know, and that's pretty far away. So yes, it is impacting people. Think about anybody driving down I-95, whatever. That's what we need to focus on. So don't worry about what it's called, what it's named, whatever. Who's got this idea? Who's got that? Focus on what could this mean for me? And again, for somebody down there, I don't know much about it, but apparently we've lost a couple people in rip currents, and that's a very sad day for those families or singular family, whatever the case may be. All right, so a couple more things to point out regarding the system and our next feature down there. Look at all that energy over the Yucatan, part of that big gyre that's been sitting down here. You guys are probably sick of that term, aren't you? I am. 
now we're ready for the tropical waves and normal hurricane season type stuff to take shape. That'll be coming probably towards the end of the month, closer to the end of the month and into July. We'll worry about that later. But there's the Vort signature down at 5,000 feet, 850 millibar relative vorticity. So yeah, 92L has everything going for it again, except the deep thunderstorms and how they are organized. It's all very disheveled. Um, and that'll move inland and uh, bring some squally weather to Jacksonville, Brunswick, and the vicinity, and uh, eventually move over southern Georgia. In fact, I can show you this. Let's take a look at it on the GFS from today. We use blue here to point stuff out. There's the disturbance down at the lower levels at 5,000 feet, 850 millibars, easy to see. And then here's that gyre still sitting down here, gyrating around doing its thing. So let's see what goes on over the next few days. Uh, 92L does eventually move inland over southeast Georgia, northern Florida, dies away eventually over there, bringing some showers and thunderstorms, you know, heavy rain from time to time, and then that's pretty much it. Meanwhile, let's back it up. Our next feature, and this has a pretty good shot here of becoming our next named storm, Beryl, B-E-R-Y-L, as that moves towards Mexico, and then eventually that moisture, let's switch it over to the moisture so I can show you. That moisture moves in eventually uh, over Mexico and might get swept into the desert southwest. We'll see about that. And then, of course, our uh, other feature down here, not much moisture associated with 92L, so not a big rain threat after it comes and goes. All right? And then, really, the tropics, let's just go back to the uh, 850 chart. Tropics not too active outside of 92L here and our other feature over here. Let's run this out to a week, and I can show you. There you go. Five days, and then finally by day seven. Nope, not much out there. There's a little disturbance right there that we need to watch as it gets into the Northwest Caribbean and the vicinity of the Cayman Islands, but nothing else too pressing as we start to round out the month. All right, so a couple things I wanted to point out, the odds and ends part of today's update. All of this disturbed weather in the Gulf of Mexico has helped to sort of shave off some of that excess heat. And I point this out because remember recently we had a lot of 30 degrees Celsius over here, a lot of 30 degrees Celsius isotherms over in the Western Gulf. Now the 30 degree isotherms, that's simply a meteorological term for, or an oceanographic term, I guess, for, um, lot, well, it's in the atmosphere too, line of equal temperature, that's the bottom line, lines of equal temperature, isotherms. And the 30 Celsius, they're right here. And why is that important? Anytime I see 30 Celsius, that's like, what, 86 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. That is very, very warm. And later in the season, most of the Gulf will probably be 30 Celsius or higher, especially once we clear the pattern of this big gyre and all that stuff that's been going on down there to sort of mix things up. We will eventually set up a big Bermuda high over the Western Atlantic, and the flow will be pretty light through the area, and the southerly to southeasterly wind flow will usher in that very warm Caribbean water, and with the disturbances gone, we should see an increase in those sea surface temperatures again, but as for now, the top has been sort of taken off, if you will, and I watch this stuff every day, so I figured I'd point it out to you. Now, the other thing I wanna show you, and I'm really proud of this, this is really cool, for those of you that have been following along long enough, you know all about our hail project, my foray into the severe weather world. I figured enough people are tracking tornadoes. Certainly, I mean, they're making a movie about it that's coming out in about a month, right? The sequel or the follow-up or whatever it is to Twister. Yeah, they're not making any movies about hail necessarily. Maybe they should one day. Um, so I thought, you know, let's, let's study hail. Let's really get out there and understand how hail does what it does and make it a big project. So we called it the aptly named Hail Project. Very simple. And one of the things that I did recently when I was out in Wyoming is I put one of those GoPro Max 360 cameras on top of this gigantic hail guard that a company here in Wilmington built for me. And I might have showed this recently. I can't remember. I've been so darn busy. But I wanted to show you today. <clears throat> this was remarkable. And I can show it to you in 360 thanks to the YouTube player here. This is that big hail guard, and it literally covers the entire top of the vehicle, 
The front of my Tacoma would be like way over here. That's another camera that looks back across everything, of course. And then these are actually flood bags here from Quick Dam that I was using to try to capture the hailstones. And it turns out that this tray, so to speak, is about three inches, two inches, three inches deep that the company built, Edwards Crane and uh, Fabrication. Edwards Incorporated is their name. Here in Wilmington, they built this thing for me. Um, it collects hail very efficiently. Let's just fast forward a little bit. You see it starting to fall. Look at that. Now, this is what was so cool about it. When you look up, you can see the hail falling from the sky. And, I mean, that is totally, uh, like, amazing. Like, wow. I mean, it really, really impressed me. You can see some of the larger stones there. This was not a huge event, but it was a lot of hail, that's for sure. But just seeing the hail coming down out of the sky... And here's one I wanted to you know, make sure you guys were aware of. This is available. I'm pretty sure I made this public. And if you have one of those VR headsets, like from MetaQuest or even the Apple Vision or whatever it is, I put my MetaQuest 2 on last night, went to my YouTube channel, <laughs> watched this, and it was absolutely amazing. It's like you're the camera sitting there, and you can look up and see those hailstones coming down out of the sky. As the 360 video gets higher and higher resolution, higher quality, where and I just probably have to buy a more expensive version or something, we are really going to be able to learn a lot about this. Put these cameras out in areas where there's a population, for example. Uh, this was sitting out on some highway there north of Lusk, Wyoming. And it was just me, the highway, and a few of those deer that live out there, and acres and acres of grass as far as the eye could see and a couple trillion hailstones that fell out of the sky. But I wanted to show you this because it's a really neat thing, again, showing you the power of what technology can do, showing us nature, and in this case, storms, like we've never seen them before. I mean, again, that is so cool. So if you've got one of these VR headsets, we'll go full screen for a second. I mean, I can't wait to do this in, like, baseball-sized hail. Luckily, that doesn't fall as dense, hopefully, as this does, but that would be pretty cool to see those come down. And then maybe the more we do this, we can start feeding it into some AI models and we can start getting velocities and tracer elements to understand angles better and actually let this lend itself towards true hail research rather than just the observation part. Observation is the first part of research, of course, in science. And uh, we're doing a good job of observing but what, we, what can we do with that? That's what we want to do going forward is sort of answer that question. We're good at observing. How can we make this practically useful going forward? Well, that's what the next few years, <laughs> there's that meme again, of this hail project will help us to figure out. All right? So a couple things. I will be um, not out of town. What am I going to I'm taking the weekend off, whatever, family time, uh, soccer and just other stuff, right? Yes, even in the heart of summer here or whatever, first day of summer. Uh, so no update tomorrow, no update Sunday, unless 93L, which is coming, warrants it, which probably that means there will be an update Sunday. Otherwise, the next update will be Monday. So if you don't see me tomorrow or Sunday, don't despair. I'll be back on Monday. But, you know, whatever that system's going to do down around the Yucatan, probably going to have an update on Sunday. All right? So you guys have a good rest of your Friday. As always, thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, because some people watch on Patreon, we put these videos on Patreon first, or I do, and then I make them public on YouTube a little bit later. So if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Let yourself know when we post a video, especially new stuff like that hail video, all right? And again, thanks uh, to you from all of us at the Hurricane Track family here, our little community we got going on. We appreciate you watching. Have a great rest of your Friday and a good weekend ahead. And if I don't see you Sunday, I'll definitely see you again sometime Monday morning.